What's up, everyone? It's the best time of the week. Wednesday, um, well, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you're listening to this right when it comes out. Or it could be 9 p.m. West Coast Time. Or it could be whatever time it is in other parts of the world. But um, I'm ignorant and I only pay attention to my time zone. So uh, welcome to another episode of Who Gives a Dram, everybody. Um, we're on episode 36. And we have a lot to talk about this week. Um, quite a bit happened. Um, we had the Loki season finale, um, which was huge. And we also had uh, some other things happen that uh, we're going to go into. And besides all the events that happened, we have a huge, huge bourbon that we're going to review today um, that I will also get into Um, once we get into the podcast. But before then, you guys, let's take care of a little bit of business. If you're not following the podcast already, make sure you check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Who Gives a Dram. And make sure that wherever you're listening to this podcast, whether it be on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, Breaker, Overcast, Buzzsprout, wherever you're listening, you guys, make sure you're subscribed. It really does help out the show, and that way you never miss an episode. And on Apple Podcasts, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, uh, go down to the bottom there, rate us five stars, and leave us a review. It will mean the world to us. And um, if you're watching the video podcast or listening to the video podcast, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Um, Again, that really helps out the show. Make sure you're playing our videos. Make sure you're leaving a like. Make sure you're leaving a comment. Let me know what you think about the episode. If you're listening to this on YouTube, leave a comment below right now and let me know what you think of Who Gives a Dram. And if you guys want to use the whiskey um, glass that I use every single week on the podcast, it's called Snoop Glass. And they're really, honestly, my favorite nosing and tasting whiskey glasses on the market. This one in particular is uh, the stainless steel tumbler. It's fantastic, especially for this year. It's very durable. And not only that, it's very sleek. It has such a modern design. Feels good in the hand. They have they have different colorways as well. They have a wood colorway of this. And they have several different uh, options when it comes to uh, glassware as well. So uh, go to, go to snoopglass.com, check out their products, and when you are ready to check out, enter the promo code WGAD20 for 20% off your entire order. Once again, that's www.snoopglass.com, promo code WGAD20 for 20% off your entire order. Last but not least, you guys, this podcast is presented by The Grapevine Media. Um, check out www.thegrapevinemedia.com. You guys, I say it every week. It's a great site. Uh, my my boys over there are doing a fantastic job keeping up with the site, and I'm honored to be a part of it. I'm honored to be a part of it. We just started a, a gaming channel, a Grapevine Unplugged. So if you're into Twitch streaming and gaming and stuff like that, make sure you check out that. Um, we also have a full merch store over there as well with Grapevine Media merchandise and some of the podcasts that we that we uh, represent have some merch on there as well. So make sure you check that out and uh, support the Grapevine Media. So we're at episode 36. Did I think we were going to do episode uh, do 36 episodes? No, not really. Um, but I'm really happy that we're here. I, I, I honestly, I look forward to this every single week to talk to you guys and to uh, review another whiskey. So uh, let's let's jump right into it. Episode 30. I, I I forgot to do an athlete last week. Some one of you guys should have should have yelled at me or something, saying Connor, you forgot to do an athlete. I didn't do an athlete last week. Was episode 35, Peerless Rye Whiskey. And uh, it would have been the Kevin Durant episode, probably. Um, but you guys, you gotta, you gotta be on top of me with that. This is what this is a thing now. I made sure to look at athletes that had that had number thirty six, and the biggest and baddest one, quite literally, was Jerome Bettis, the bus. Pittsburgh Steelers running back from the nineties to the two thousand to the mid two thousands. I think he retired two thousand six or two thousand seven. Uh, so today's the Jerome Bettis podcast, the bus. Or the refrigerator. What was his nickname? Shit. I should have written that down. What was Jerome Bettis's nickname? What was Jerome Bettis' nickname? I think it was the f- the bus. Yeah, why did I think it was the fridge? Um, 13,664 rushing yards, 91 touchdowns, and 1,457 receiving yards. Um, first round of the 1993 NFL Draft. And uh, when did he retire? Inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2015. He retired in 2006. There you go. I'm the man. Um, 
Super Bowl champion, NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year, NFL Comeback Player of the Year, Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year, two-time first-team All-Pro, second-team All-Pro, and six-time Pro Bowler. So I remember watching Jerome Bettis when I was a kid and um, always liked him. You know, just a big, mean running back that would run through people, huge guy, and um, yeah, he was he was fun to watch. And I was, although I was young, two thousand six, I was twelve. So I watched him play from like eight to twelve was when I probably watched football, started watching football at least. Um, I just remember him being a big deal. So today's the Jerome Bettis podcast, the Bus. Today's the Bus podcast. And and I'm happy that it's the I'm happy we're on episode 36. I mean, this is a big deal, you guys. And I don't know about y'all, but it was hot as hell this week, humid. We've we've had a string of crappy weather since Fourth of July, even before Fourth of July. Really, since Memorial Day, there hasn't been too many good days. But finally, I'm recording this on a Sunday. Yesterday, we finally had a great day. Uh, got to spend some time with the family at the pool and just kind of get some get my tan on. Guys are watching the video podcast. I don't know if you can tell how tan I am right now, because um, I'm not. Because I just sunburnt and my back is toasted. So uh, that's always good. Um, but that was fun. Got to uh, got to hang out with the family and just enjoy a nice hot Saturday at the pool. But man, I I don't even want to know what my air conditioner bill is going to be this month. I've had it running for so long, and that poor little air conditioner, man. <laughs> What's worse than just knowing you have a window air conditioner running and it's just not stopping that I'm making, I'm making, I'm making my air conditioner work more than Jerome Bettis. My air conditioner is called the bus. It's just plowing through the, these, uh, these hot days and I'm, I'm thankful I have it. Um, yeah, but it's been hot. It's been super hot. Speaking about hot, we are drinking a hot whiskey today. Uh, a plus transition from from me. No, no big deal. Uh, yeah, we're drinking a hot whiskey today. We're drinking a hitter. We are drinking a another whiskey from dare I say my favorite release. Now, not necessarily my favorite whiskey, but my favorite release release of whiskey uh, every year annual release. The Elijah Craig Barrel Proof series. We've reviewed a bunch of them. We've reviewed the A one twenty one. We reviewed the uh, B520 and the C920, three of my favorite pours, and we've also re- reviewed the small batch as well, the regular 12-year small batch. Um, I found this bottle collecting dust on a shelf at a liquor store I'd never been into, and the guy I was at, at uh, I was talking to at the store, um, I, I quickly made conversation with him. Looking through his stuff, he had some some cooler stuff. He had a handle of Weller Special Reserve, which I thought was, you know, I've never seen that before. Um, he advertised some 1792 Sweet Wheat, so I asked him about that. He said he didn't have it. I was like, whatever, not a big deal. I'm looking through. Solid whiskey selection and a good guy as well. And I look up at the top and I see a barrel proof. Um, it's turned sideways, though. So I'm like, all right, um, I I bet you it's the B five twenty one. I've already got it. Let's let's see what it is. I pull it down, and it is Elijah Craig C nine nineteen, which is what we're reviewing today. And I my mind was blown. I've never I did not think I would see a that old of a release of of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof ever on the shelf. So I was blown away. I was skipping, dancing, just I was. And I was happy. And I look to the guy, and I'm like, hey, man, how much for this bottle? The guy says 100 bucks, And I say, ah, f- ah, man. Well, let me look. There was another one behind. I was like, I wonder if it's the same one. I, I have to know now. And so I, I got a little, like, a stepladder that he had right there. I got up. I pulled it down. It was Elijah Craig B520, which we reviewed on the podcast, and I think it's been the highest-rated whiskey we've done. So I'm I'm like a I'm like a uh, I'm like a I'm like a uh, I can't think of an analogy I'm like a pig in a pile of shit. <laughs> I was a pig in a pile of shit when I saw those. So I had them both in my hand. One of my favorite pours of all time, and just a a what I consider a unicorn bottle. I mean I I, I think it's fair to say that. So I'm I'm looking at the guy. I'm like, hey man, listen. 
I will buy both of these right now, but I'm not paying $100 for them. What can we do? And he goes, well, what if we did uh, $90 per bottle? And obviously, I'm thinking in the back of my head, I, obviously, I know what the MSRP is. This guy's a nice guy. I know he's. I know he wants to make his money on them. He's obviously had these for quite a while. Um, and I, I, you know, I don't want to nickel and dime them because... I, I'm a ver- I'm a believer in in supporting your your local liquor stores, and who knows maybe this guy will hook me up in the in the future. And I said, listen, man, I know what the you know uh, ninety bucks. I, I thank you for going down, but I still I can't do that. What 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 if we bring it down to eighty dollars? Eighty dollars a bottle. I'll buy them both right now. He said. He he actually didn't even hesitate. He said, all right. So I'm like, okay. Is that easy? So, lesson for you guys. Sometimes, I wouldn't be a dick when you're trying to negotiate bourbon prices because a lot of them are, you know, if you don't buy it, someone else is going to buy it, and it's not like the juice goes bad. So, you, they're not going to give it up. But if you make conversation, if you seem like a normal human being, and you and we were talking about Tool, the band Tool. He was playing uh, Tool. Um, he's actually playing uh, Invincible off the... Uh, um, Fear and Occulum album, the new the new Tool album, and I lift to that song, and I love Tool. So I'm like, man, I, this is this is some great music to to uh, to uh, buy some whiskey to. What right when I got in there, and so we start talking about Tool, we start talking about music, we start talking about life, about the town we were in, and I start asking him about you know his family owns the business, yada yada yada. yada. We go down, uh, and you know we uh, we bring it down eighty bucks. And I, I thanked him, and I will definitely go in at some other point and at least make an effort to, to get something from him. Um, so I thought that was cool. Now, all my bourbon purchases or my whiskey purchases, for the most part, still go through Wyoming Package Store. They're my favorites. Um, however, it's nice to support the local guys and just give them a little bit of business. You know, maybe they don't need the support because booze is a is a booming business, especially since COVID. Um, but you know, it's um, it's just it's the uh, it's the thought that counts. I think I'm a, I'm a believer in karma, so hopefully that brings me some good karma. Maybe I don't know. And take a little bit of water there. It's hot in here. It's hot in the studio. It's hot in the Who Gives a Dram studio. But anyways, yeah, this has a new home now. It is sitting here in the Who Gives a Dram studio. And you guys, I haven't even opened the seal yet, so we are going to do it on the podcast, and we're going to do it right now, then we're going to get into a little bit of Loki talk, um, but I want to let this rest in the bottle a bit before we um, review it, and I am super excited, sitting here drinking some barrel-proof bourbon on a Sunday afternoon. I'm just letting you guys who are just listening to the podcast know that I'm legit opening this right now. And I'm going to try to be entertaining while I do it. I only get one take. When when you decide you're going to open a bottle live on a podcast, you only get one take. Because you can't reseal the bottle. So this is a one take. Although this is always a one take podcast, this is for real a one take podcast. Now here we go. This is the sound we all love. Oh yeah. Whiskey of the year. Ultimate spirit. Ultimate Spirits Challenge, 95 points. It's got a little tag here that I'm keeping on the bottle. Two-time double gold medal. San Francisco World Spirits Competition, 95 points. To sip our barrel-proof bourbon is to experience bourbon in its purest form, uncut, straight from the barrel, and without chill filtering. Shout out Chill Filter Podcast. Each batch has the signature nose, taste, and finish of pure Elijah Craig. We're proud to say that remarkable consistency earned us Whiskey Advocates Whiskey of the Year Award. Um, I got a little bit of water in here from when I washed out my snoop glass. All right. So we're not drinking yet, but we are going to pour a little bit into the glass. Not a lot. A little bit more. Just enough to get the juices flowing, as they say. So we'll get back to the whiskey in a minute. We're going to let it sit in the snoop glass for a little bit. Give it a little swirly poo. Got a few things I want to talk about before we get into the whiskey. Um, Loki season finale, Loki season six. 
And, you know, if you guys don't like me talking about all this other stuff besides whiskey, let me know. Um, I haven't gotten any feedback about the other topics I talked about, but like last week I talked about Conor McGregor. And I've talked about other stuff in the past, but I kind of like to speak about th- other things that, I, that I'm passionate about, you know, on this podcast. Even though it's a whiskey podcast, you know, it, it's, it's tough to just go into whiskey for like a half hour or longer. Um, and plus, you know, I feel like a lot of you guys listen to Loki and, or, or watch Loki. And I think it's 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 fine to have just a few minutes dedicated to some other things that are happening in the world. So, but if you guys don't like it, let me know, and maybe we can change it up. I want to make sure you guys, my listeners, are happy. Um, but Loki season finale. So if I'm thinking about, so this would have came out a week ago today, because this is getting released on Wednesday. However, it was only four days ago for me. Um, now, obviously. Uh, Huge episode, huge episode. In the moment, and obviously spoilers, obviously spoilers. This that goes without. You should have seen it by now. If you haven't seen it a week after, that's on you. In the moment was a little underwhelmed, just a little bit. I mean, I wanted to see some someone. I wanted to see some huge action sequence. That's just like the action fan of me. That's me expecting every movie to be like John Wick. Or every show to be like Tom, John Wick, or every ending to have that huge fight scene, like End Game, I guess. But I, it only took me about a day to snap out of that. This was perhaps the. It goes into one of the most important hours in MCU history. I mean, this. Obviously, for you guys who don't know, Kang the Conqueror was technically introduced. Um. He wasn't ever mentioned to be Kang the Conqueror. However, he was, um, what was it? What was his name? Now I'm, now I'm blanking. Uh, Loki season, uh, Loki episode six. Was it the one above all? Was that his name? Oh, he who remains, not the one above all. He who remains. That was the guy's name, um, Nathaniel Richards, who in the comics is a descendant of Reed Richards, who is uh, Mr. Fantastic, just for those who don't know, a very subtle nod to the, to the Fantastic Four. Well, not subtle, it's direct descendant, but you know, obviously we're already confirmed to get a Fantastic Four movie down the road. Nathaniel Richards, and he mentioned essentially how how this whole TVA thing came to be. I'm not going to explain it all. I just want to say that after about a day of letting it stew, it was so, so satisfying to have a show end. And obviously there's still things to be be, um, addressed. There's going to be a Loki season two. It was the perfect cap onto season one, and it it opens up everything for the future of the MCU. I mean, this opens up. Obviously, this directly correlates with Spider or with uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I mean, this is going to directly correlate with uh, Spider Man um, No Way Home. You know, it's confirmed that Doc Ock's going to be in it. Jamie Foxx's Electro is going to be in it. I don't know if it's confirmed Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin is going to be in it. And I think the Vulture, uh, Michael Keaton's Vulture is going to be in it. I mean, this is going to open up. I, I guarantee we're seeing all three Spider-Men. I guarantee we're seeing Tobey Maguire. I guarantee we're seeing Andrew Garfield and obviously uh, uh, Tom Holland. So this opens up that entire movie. This makes it all a possibility. The infinite timelines that are that are now taking place because Sylvie killed He Who Remains. There's now infinite variants of what is Kang the Conqueror, you know, beginning to, that are going to be explored. This just opens up everything. This opens up recastings for, for, for characters that we already know. This, this opens up cosmic beings like Silver Surfer, um, Galactus, Doctor Doom, 
all of those classic villains that we've yet to be introduced, this, I mean, a Thanos variant could come along. I mean, we could see another Captain America recasted, another Iron Man recasted. This is this is so huge for the MCU and 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 the entire cosmic universe that the MCU is creating. I mean, now it's more than universe. Now it's now it's a multiverse. Um. And this did it. This was what tipped it over, and it's confirmed. I think you really got it confirmed when when Sylvie pushed Loki through the time lapse door at the end, and he's he's running through the TVA, and he sees uh, Hunter B. I think it's Hunter B. Fifteen and uh, our boy Mobius M. Mobius, and they're they're in the um, in the uh, library, you know, discussing the uh, you know the branch timelines that are beginning to happen. And Loki is running to them and saying, "It's him. It's it's he who it's uh, he who remains. It's it's um, it's it's happening. He's so dangerous, blah blah blah." And then Mobius goes, "Who are you? Are you in accounting? Like who are you?" And then Loki's like, "Oh no, I, I, where am I?" And he turns around, and instead of the uh, Timekeeper's statue, it's it's um, the actor who we just saw that I'm forgetting his name. But it's it's obviously has has he's wearing Kang the Conqueror's iconic, classic uh, armor. It's Kang the Conqueror. So, although Kang the Conqueror wasn't said, the, uh, he who remains did mention that he's a he's known as a conqueror, and he's had the purple, you know, robe on that that is synonymous with with Kang the Conqueror, and. I mean, great performance from Tom Hiddleston. Great performance from the guy who played Kang the Conqueror. Who was it? Who played Kang the Conqueror? Um, what was his name? Jonathan Majors. Shout out Jonathan Majors because, wow, he played that variant almost like a, a good version of Kang the Conqueror perfectly. And now I'm very interested to see how his other his other takes on the other variants of Kang are going to be because he's already confirmed as the villain in, in Ant Man and the Quant Quantum Mania I think it's the name the next Ant Man movie. I mean we have some heavy 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 movies coming up. We have I mean who knows what's going to happen. This just makes it so like you're flipped on your head and your mind explodes and you're like what the hell is going to happen now. So, great episode if you haven't watched it. I hope you have because I just spoiled it. Um, man, what an episode. What an episode. What a, just a satisfying completion to season one and by far the best show MCU's put out. By far the best show the MC, uh, uh, Marvel has put out so far. I also, you know, we're going to switch subjects real quick. I also put out a question on Instagram this week on my Instagram story, and I had a f- quite a few people respond. I picked out the ones that I actually reposted just because they're the ones I saw and I, I could I could do real quick. I could put on my I was at the pool and I was I wanted to ask my followers what is your favorite poolside whiskey and I got some interesting answers. I'm gonna shout out a few people right now, um, and we're gonna we're gonna discuss these answers real quickly before we get into the to the review. So my buddy Marvin, at whose handle is at whiskey wine one o one, great Instagram account. If you don't follow him, does reviews very similar to mine and very knowledgeable. Uh, seems like a good guy. We've we've conversed a, uh, a bit on Instagram. Um, he said screwball. Now I find that interesting. I can see why he would say screwball. And and I I want to preface this by saying I don't know if he's joking or not. I know screwball. You know people people hate on it. For what it is, it tastes good for, for what it's supposed to be. I mean, I would never willingly drink it, but um, I can see why you would say that. It's just, it's very sweet. It's very light. There's not much to it. It tastes like a, like a peanut butter, like a milk, sh- like a, like a milkshake almost like, like a peanut butter, um, like peanut butter milk or something like that. Like it's, it's, it's just tastes like peanut butter and I love peanut butter, but peanut butter whiskey never been my jam. Um, so he said screwball. I had, uh, Adam from, uh, he's at a to the Ingram and on Instagram, he said whistle pig piggyback six year. Now I'm not a, 
I've actually never had the piggyback six year. Um, or maybe I have. I think I have. I hope I put on my, I think I put on my story that I have. So maybe I have. I don't, right in the moment right now, I don't remember. But um, not the biggest fan of, of Whistle Pig. Um, I'm not a fan, a huge fan of, fan of Rise in general. Um, people seem to think that Rise are real good in the summertime. So I'd be willing, this guy seems like, you know, Adam seems like he knows what he's talking about. So I'm willing to give it a go. Uh, my cousin Tessa, shout out to Tessa. Um, I won't give out your Instagram just in case. Uh, she she said Jameson. So uh, obviously, that's the Gilbert blood in us, the Irish from Ireland. Our 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 blood has Jameson in it. Um, and I've I've actually reviewed Jameson here on the podcast. So go back and and check out the Jameson review that I did. Uh, but yeah, Tessa said Jameson. Uh, Daryl, our buddy Daryl. Uh, at Whiskey Sith, he was on the podcast a few weeks ago. If you haven't checked out that podcast, go check it out. It's a great episode. We had a really funny time. Um, my my uh, Canadian Trippers TikTok obviously was a hit because it kind of went didn't go viral, but like it had by far the most views I've ever had on a TikTok, like a few thousand. Um, so that was kind of cool. And I actually. I, I forgot to mention this. I had a Canadian stripper respond to me on TikTok with the reasoning why people can't throw dollar coins at, at strippers. They can in Alberta, but the reason was because people were heating them up. I don't. I'm assuming with some type of lighter and throwing them at the at the at the poor strippers. You know, like like fucking molted like like a volcano rock coming at them man that's that's just straight up mean i can't even make a joke about that that's just mean <laughs> those but that they those strippers definitely earned that one dollar after that i'll tell you that much <laughs> but um we, uh daryl said uh to the best poolside whiskey question he said um uh either balvini double uh double wood or a caribbean cask um, I've had the Balvini Double Wood. Um, honestly, not what I would go to for a poolside whiskey. However, however, Daryl's a great whiskey mind, and if he thinks it's good, I am more than willing to try it. So next time we have a hot summer day, um, actually, I don't think I have any Balvini. Regardless, I, I trust his input, and um, I'm not surprised when with Balvini that lighter, kind of, kind of uh, sweeter Scotch seems to be up Daryl's alley so go check out our, our episode um from a few weeks ago uh sean um at at ignorant underscore envy um he said uh he again said uh rye whiskeys are the best so maybe rye whiskey like the i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right it's the rye with the number three as as the you know the word rye and i've never had rye whiskey i've never seen it I have seen it, but I haven't seen it in a long time. Um, so I am hoping to f- to find a bottle, and who knows? Maybe when I find that bottle, we'll have rye whiskey come on, and uh, we'll we'll drink some together. And maybe that's already in the works, you guys. So that could be coming up in a little bit. You never know. I guess you'll have to stay tuned to check out. Um, at Urban Bourbon Hunter, who's a friend of the show, he's hopped on a live with me once or twice. You know, like well, not on the live, but he was. We were, we were chit-chatting through live once or twice. Um, nice guy. He always says nice things about the podcast. I appreciate you. Um, he mentioned Weller 107. Can never go wrong with 107, you guys. Come on. We haven't done it on the podcast yet. I'm looking at it right now on my whiskey shelf. I'm just waiting for a big episode to do it. And um, it's one of my favorite pours. That's that's really all that needs to be said. And last but not least, my buddies Cole and Robbie at Chill Filtered Podcast. I'm not sure which one responded to this i would assume cole because i know he's an e.h taylor fan i'm sure robbie is too but uh they mentioned e.h taylor small batch and i mean you can't really go wrong with that i would say there is no right answer but that's the right answer you know just of uh a higher proofed bourbon you know uh, it's a bottled and bond so it's a hundred proof um and that sweetness that sweetness that comes with eht is just I mean, it's it is fantastic. So I I agree with with Chill Filter Podcast on that one. 
So thank you guys for, uh, there were more that responded to the answer. I just, and uh, you know, next time um, I do a question like this, we'll, uh, I'll get, make sure to get more answers on the podcast, but I kind of just jotted down those answers quickly. Uh, but thanks guys for, uh, for, for uh, answering the question. Um, and make sure you go, make sure you go check out all those Instagram accounts I mentioned. But anyways, you guys, it's, it's time to, uh, it's time to, it's time to get into this whiskey because we've been letting it sit here in this new glass for a bit. And I'm thirsty. So, again, well, let me take a sip of water real quick. Mm. Ah, it's hot in here. Again, guys, we're looking at Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C919. This is a barrel proof release from Elijah Craig uh, that came out in September of 2019. We've gone over what the numbers mean before. Go check out my previous Elijah Craig barrel proof videos. I have three of them. So go check out the reviews on that. C919 is coming in at 136.8 proof. Golly. 68.4% alcohol. That is a hot one. I don't know if this is the hottest one I've had on the podcast so far. I don't remember what the old Forrester one that Kale and I did was. Um, but this is hot, man. It's not. This might not be the best to do in a hot room right now, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. So obviously you guys know uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is one of my favorites. Um, I can't see myself not buying every release that they come out with from now on. I mean, I have five bottles of it now. Um, and... They're just so solid, every single one of them. Every single one of them. So let's get into the nose, see what we smell. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> that came, that kicked me right in the face. That's because I, I was swirling it around and then immediately stuck my entire nose into it like a rookie. So right off the bat, I'm getting a lot of oak. And it's it's tough for me to get past the alcohol smell right now. But going beneath that, it's just very sweet. I get like a like a sugary vanilla caramel, uh, but I would say oak the most, and it's hot. You, can, you can tell it's hot on the nose. It's. I feel like for someone who's not a high proof guy, it might turn them off. And for those who, not to say I have experience doing this, but I like to think that the amount of whiskey that I've tasted so far you know, 36 different bottles officially, plus, you know, the the several dozens, if not hundreds, others I've had outside of the podcast. I like to think I can pick I can pick up things at least semi good. I'm definitely getting oak. And now now that I'm really looking past it, there is definitely a vanilla and there's Definitely a sugary note to it. I'm not getting a lot of fruit, not getting any floral notes, not getting any real spicy notes. Yeah, this is a, honestly, the more I smell this, it's a vanilla bomb. This is a lot of vanilla, a lot of oak. It's oaky vanilla. It's hot. It's not a whole lot going on, I don't think. I'm trying to get past that that initial vanilla smell. Maybe a hint of leather. I just closed my eyes on that smell to really to really hone in on my senses. Yeah, it's mostly it's mostly um, the, the predominant one is oak for sure. It's oaky, it's hot, and it's a vanilla bomb bit of caramel in there and I think a little bit of leather is going to be on there as well. Very pleasant nose. So far, I can I'm excited. I think it smells great. Right up there with all the other bear proofs. But now it's and now it's the time. Now it's the time to decide how this is going to taste. So, you guys, to another week of who gives a dram. <coughs> To another week of drinking whiskey with y'all 36 weeks in this is the most fun i've i've ever had doing anything you know who gives a dram is great especially because i get to drink whiskey with you guys so let's do it
Ooh. As you guys know, first sip just goes down. First sip just goes down. And I think that's I think that's kind of widely considered a good way to do it is you just sip the first sip. I haven't had whiskey all day today. It's only it's 4:20 in the afternoon. 4:20. Ooh, it's 4:20. It's actually exactly 4:20 p.m. AM. It's 4:20 AM. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I'm sweating already. It's, it's hot. It's definitely hot. My mouth is almost like a little numb right now. Off the bat, besides the hotness, and it's not spicy, it's just proofy. Again with the oak. Again with the oak. Uh, I need to I need to drink a little bit more of it to really to really see what else I'm tasting here, but I mean right off the bat, you're looking at a at a very high proof bourbon. Twelve year bourbon. And by the way, this is I don't know if this is the last year that Elijah Craig did these barrel proof bottles while still utilizing the small batch tagline underneath uh Elijah Craig right here. Cause now it says barrel proof right there. Um But this is one of the last bottles they did it with. They may have started with A uh A one twenty, but uh I don't know that for a fact. I know B five twenty has barrel proof. So um Anyways, with that being said, let's take another sip of this. It's very hot. (laughs) I'm getting more leather on the taste. I'm kind of chewing it to see what I can taste. It's making my whole mouth numb. It's actually making my mouth numb. No joke. I feel like I'm back in the orthodontist chair, getting my wisdom tooth pulled out. Ugh, sends shivers up my spine thinking about that. <clears throat> getting past the heat, I'm getting a lot of what I got on the nose. I'm getting, uh, besides that leather, I'm getting oak and I'm getting a bit of vanilla toned down not as much on this on on the nose I'm not, I'm not getting as much vanilla on the taste as i am getting on the nose or as I, as I got on the nose i'm sorry interesting i'm not really sure this one's kind of pulling me through a loop here it's so hot that like that like it's hard to figure out what it is but i like it though All right, on that one, I got a bit more vanilla, a bit more vanilla, some butterscotch I'm getting, and and leather, and maybe a little bit of tobacco on the end. It's got a big, oily, long finish, hot finish, a little bit of pepper on the back end, Um, but that's it, man. That's all I'm getting. That's all I'm getting, and I'm loving it. Uh, this is a McDonald's. This is a McDonald's bottle because I'm loving it. I love these these higher proofs because it's so interesting how it affects the flavor. You know, for example, if I was to pour a little bit of water in here, which I'll do right now, you know, just the hairiest of hairs, that might even be too much. We'll see how it affects the taste. You know, you give it a little swirly poo. And for those that don't know, adding water to your whiskey you know naturally you know brings the proof down you're cutting it with water you're taking some of that alcohol vapor out it's it's proofing down the whiskey so if you don't like if a whiskey's too hot for you add a drop of water in there add two drops add three drops add an ice cube that will help tone down the alcohol vapors in the whiskey and you might enjoy it more like now on the nose with this i'm getting a bit more fruit proof it down a little bit and I really get a pronounced burnt sugar caramel and like a juicy fruit like a juicy fruit like a candy juicy fruit you know the candy juicy fruit that's what they called me in high school I actually don't know if that'd be good or bad 
but I don't take it back. <laughs> but yeah, that that that's it's a much more pronounced nose now that there's now that there's water in it. You take a li- you take what what I got that leather, that that vanilla, that butterscotch. Well, I didn't get butterscotch in the nose, but that caramel. And you just amplify it. You proof it down. Bring the alcohol vapors down. You almost turn the the volume of each scent up. And now I'm getting a bit more of a fruity note. It's actually much more pleasant on the nose with a little bit of water added in. (laughs) Man, I hate coughing. I try not to. But again, on the taste, proofs it down. It brings out all those flavors even more. This is a whiskey, although I love high proof, this is way better with water in it. I don't know what the proof is, but the water cut through it, but wow, with the water in it, all that vanilla, all of that, not really, a, this is a vanilla bomb. You still get that nice oak, but vanilla, 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 vanilla ice, 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 baby, vanilla, vanilla, baby, vanilla, 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 baby. That's what this whiskey is. This is not. This is also. This is not only the McDonald's bottle because ba 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 ba. I'm loving it. But this is also the vanilla, vanilla, vanilla baby bottle. Just don't give it. Don't actually give it to your baby. I mean, maybe. I guess if you like, I've heard people like take whiskey and rub it on their baby's lips to kind of get them to fall asleep. <laughs> Turning your kids into alcoholics, but <laughs> it's neither here nor there. Yeah, this is way better with water in it. We're gonna, we're gonna. Oh man, that's so good. We're gonna grade it with water in it. I'm giving this a big old, big old fat nine point five. This is fan, freaking tastic with water in it. Without water, I'd probably give like a nine point two, but with water, yeah, nine point five. This is delicious. This is up there with the best ones I've ever had. That might be saying about what whiskeys I've had, but um, I'm just a huge barrel proof guy. I love this. I love this barrel proof. I love Elijah Craig. Elijah Craig, if you want to sponsor the podcast, be my guest. This is fan freaking tastic whiskey with the water proof it, proofing it down just enough to really let that vanilla bomb explore. You know, to let those flavors explore themselves. Um, man, what a difference it makes! I know we're coming up on almost forty-five minutes here, and I got to wrap this up. But let's see what Breaking Bourbon has to say. Our friends over at Breaking Bourbon. Nose is heavy vanilla, caramel, brown sugar, and oak. That's exactly what I got. Palette is bold oak, sweet brown sugar, burnt caramel, and rich vanilla. That's exact. We're 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 agreeing with this hundred percent. Finish is cinnamon, rich seasoned oak, toffee, and a pinch of leather. Well, I guess I got this one right, you guys. If if you're if breaking bourbon is considered the right way to do it, um, yeah, this is great. This is a nine point five altogether. We'll say nine point five with water, nine point two without water we'll bring it to the middle with a 9.4 official rating 9.4 one of the best whiskeys we've had on the podcast i'm so happy i paid 80 dollars for this this is worth every single freaking penny if you can find it uh if you can find it scoop it up scoop it up um because this is definitely worth it so 9.4 elijah craig barrel proof c919 Um, And that's going to do it for the episode this week, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode 36. I love doing this show for you guys. I look forward to recording this every single week, and we are not stopping. I have no plans of stopping. There is only going to be more to come, more content, more videos, more whiskeys, more collaborations, more interviews. And that's all because you guys continue to subscribe. You guys continue continue to listen. Let's get the YouTube numbers up a little bit, you guys. Help me out on that aspect. Let's get some more views per episode on YouTube. Let's get the subscriber number up. I got some cool things coming down the line. I got some cool collaborations coming down the line. And guess what? I got some cool merch coming down the line, too. I've been making merch like like my own merch, and it's it's tight, for lack of a better term. <clears throat> this week, I'm still having my brother Nick Boss play me out, but I'm going to enter in his new song, What Happened to Country, because uh, I haven't entered it in yet, and we're going to let that song play us out. So in Nick Bossy, What Happened to Country, going to play us out this week on the podcast. You guys, 
Thank you so much for tuning in. Tell a friend about who gives a dram. And don't forget, whiskey is the water of life. So let's start living. My hands are tired from paying my bills. Staring at a bottle, I'm aiming to kill. Weeks passing by and the seasons to change and I'm playing my song, trying to make me a name. People say as they walk out the bar The kids gone places, maybe even a star They don't play country down in Nashville today Just the same chord progression With nothing to say What happened to country? Three chords and the truth And who's gonna step up? Fill their big shoes Writing songs about outlaws Sing it all night And songs that'll make A grown man cry They use auto tune now down on Music Row. The true country died there a long time ago. No, they don't play Waylon on the boulevard, but they'll do anything to be rock stars. What happened to country? Three chords and the truth. And who's gonna step up? Fill their big shoes, writing songs about our loss, singing all night and songs that'll make a grown man cry. hope for us yet cause there's millions of people who cannot forget the way Johnny Cash brought a tear to their eyes or how Marty Robbins painted Texas skies what happened to country the cards and the truth and who's gonna step up and fill their big shoes writing songs about outlaws Singing all night and songs that'll make a grown man cry. A grown man cry. A grown man cry. I won't let country die.